Hi everyone. Uh, so in this video, we're going to talk about Bayes rule. Uh, and this is basically uh, looking at prob conditional probability in a different way. Um, and it's kind of bizarre the first time you see it, but it's actually really cool. So uh, let's think about this. What we're, let's talk about a problem that we've actually seen before um, and go through the steps to figure things out in this case. So um, let's say the problem we had before was say I had three bags and each bag had a different number of chocolates in it, right? So I have, um, I had two whites and one milk in the first bag, two darks and two milks in the second bag, and one white, one dark, and two milks in the third bag. And we were asked, um, if, I, if I choose a bag and I choose a chocolate, what's the chance that the chocolate is dark, right? What are the chances the chocolate is dark? Now we're gonna ask a little different. We're gonna say, okay, I choose a bag, I then choose a chocolate. I don't tell you what the bag it was. I show you that the chocolate is dark. What are the what are the probabilities for each bag that I chose it from that bag? Like, how do you know which bag I chose it from? Now, you're gonna probably be like, um, how the hell am I supposed to know that? Like, you didn't show me which bag it came out of. Uh, and it turns out that like it seems really bizarre, but we can actually answer this question. So we can ask, which bag do you think I pulled the chocolate out of? And you can actually tell me with good probabilities, which bag um, has the best chance of uh, being pulled out of. So let's think about this mathematically. So what's the first question we're gonna ask when we talk about this? Well, what we're trying to figure out is, say I have a bag, so bag I, right? Uh, I here is either one, two, or three, right? Because I have three bags. And I'm trying to ask, well, what's the probability? What's the probability that I have, that I chose bag I given that my chocolate is dark. We know this mathematically, how to write this down. Like this is already written. We already have the language. We just have to write it. Um, and this, we actually know what the formula for this is, right? This is just the probability that bag of I intersect the dark chocolate is equal to the probability of dark chocolate. Well, humans like this, we also know, right? So this technically, is going to give us D given bag I times the probability of bag I, if you really want to take it out, divided by the probability of D. And my P's and D's are starting to look similar to one another. So let me click this and clean this up. Nice, okay. Um, this is a P, cool. So let's look at this for the three bags. So first off, what's probability of D? This we had already solved before. Uh, this we saw is one fourth. So nice and easy. We, we got this number. Um, so to make life easier, we're going to note that this is also equal to three twelfths. Uh, okay, so what's bag of I intersect D? These we also calculated last time too, right? Bag one intersect D. This we know is zero. The probability of bag two intersect D. Remember, this was one third times two fourths. So we had a two twelfths chance, right? So this, this multiplication is coming from this part here, remember? So we have the conditional probabilities. And the probability for bag three with D um, was similar, right? It was one third times one fourth is equal to one twelfth. So in other words, we can calculate these things. So the probability of bag one given dark chocolate is um, zero over three twelfths, which is just zero. So there's no chance it came out of the first bag, which is expected. There's no dark chocolate in the first bag. It shouldn't appear. What's the probability for bag two given dark? Well, this is uh, two twelfths on the top and three twelfths on the bottom, right? So maybe actually, let me bring this, let me do this slowly. This is bag two intersect D divided by probability of D. So here on the right, we are on top, we have two, two twelfths, right? This is coming from this formula here. Uh, and then we have three twelfths on the bottom. And so we get two thirds. Uh, and then finally, we can look at probability of bag three. 
active and dark. This is just like the previous one, bag three intersect dark chocolate, probability of D is equal to one twelfth over three twelfths is equal to one third. So we know the probability for each one, which is super nice. Um, okay, cool. Uh, and actually what we can do, so I had more space, but I guess I didn't need it. Um, it makes it hard anyway. Um, and so we actually know exactly what the probability of choose of where this dark chocolate came from. If you say, what's the probability that it came? So more likely than not, it came from bag two. Well, if it probably came from bag two, that's the one I'm going to choose, right? I'm going to say, yo, I'm going to, I'm going to choose bag two. So it's just like that. So the question then became, well, okay, uh, let's try to generalize this and do a similar thing from before where we had N events, right? So what we said is what we wanted to calculate is, so if I take N B ones, which are like prior events, uh, and I try to calculate a prior event given a future event, right? And what we did is I took this prior event and I said, okay, well, this is just, if I write it out, I just get this, right? But on top, we already know what this is, right? This is the previous, the after event given the prior event times the probability of the prior event divided by probability of A. And this is known as Bayes' rule. So the Bayes um, was a, uh, was a uh, probabilist uh, who basically looked at this. And so like you can now start noticing that we can actually measure two different things. We can measure P of A given B, B and P of B given A. And that means things are going to get really complicated if we don't start saying which one was before, which one came after, right? We have to have some sequence of things. Um, and so we're going to actually add some terminology to all of this. <clears throat> so what we're going to say is if event happens first, so here we have event A happens before event B, then the probability of A given B is called the posterior probability of A given B. Uh, and the probability of B given A is the likelihood of A given a fixed B. So posterior means beforehand, right? Like before. So if I'm trying to go backwards of A given a future event B, then I have to go backwards. So I have to look at the posterior probability of A given B. If I want to go forward, then I have to say, okay, what's the probability of my uh, forward thing B? Or uh, what's the, sorry, what's the probability of, what's the probability of, this is wrong, one sec. This is the probability of, my notes are wrong. You have to fix this. This is the probability of B given a fixed A. <laughs> um, I'll fix this in the student notes before, well, these notes will be wrong, but the, I'll fix them in the student notes before I put them online. Um, but yeah, so it'll be right in your notes. But so we have the probability B of what's the likelihood of B given some fixed A. So I have to know what came, which thing from before I'm choosing. So I have to fix that A and then I can choose my B. Um, and the, the event A, so the probability of A itself, and we call the pr prior probability. So this is basically what's happened before. So P of A is referred to as the prior probability. 